Hello, this is Clint McDonald, continuing the Visual Basic.net tutorial series. I'm going to continue where I left off in the last tutorial, where I was using an array to place controls on a Windows form, such that you can have an unknown number of controls on the form. And I'm going to expand that to one level deeper, and actually go about using a two-dimensional array to place a grid of controls on a form. So let me show you what I mean. So I have a form here in my system and I'm going to use it to put an array of colors on the screen. And I'm going to use a label and set the back color of the label to create a, a box. So it's sort of going to look like paint swatches except it's going to be uglier than paint swatches but that's okay. So I have this um, form preset up here and there's nothing on there except for some preferences. So let me just make sure I've got my uh, startup form set up to form 3. Yes, okay. And so when I run this application, it actually goes ahead and creates random colors using RGB colors. It converts the RGB to an HTML color code and create the label with the color code as the text and then places the background color being the randomly selected color that it chose. It also changes the for color or the text color based on the darkness of the color randomly selected and then it goes ahead and places it and this is done by a two-dimensional array. So if I change this to five rows, three columns and I reset this you can see that the whole system changes or I can go five columns and three rows reset and it just keeps going through and will keep work. So let me show you how this works. So within the code itself I've defined some constants right off the bat. So I've defined the row count and the column count um, and all this is doing is setting the default values for the numeric up down boxes. After that point I only use the numeric up down box values. I also set column width and row height in the same way and then we have a grid padding, a grid margin and a header height and that's just to dimension everything properly so we can use mathematical calculations to determine how wide the forms have to be, how wide the grid is going to be, where the top left of each label is going to be placed etc. So when we load the form the first thing I do is just set the default values in the numeric up down boxes and they use the constants that I defined right above and then we're going to set the form properties. So the form properties we're going to set are the width and the height. And the width and the height are just a mathematical calculation based on the number of squares that are going to be, the spacing between the squares, how much of a margin around the outside I want, etc. And it's going to do the same thing with the height. And then obviously I'm going to set the top left of the form at 100. For this particular case, setting the Windows start position to center screen doesn't work because the form starts out really small and it centers it based on that and then if it's really big it actually goes off the screen to the bottom. So I set it up in the top left corner of the screen basically. The next thing it does is initializes the arrays. So if I go to my definition here. So what I'm doing is I'm, de I'm defining a random number. Alright, I'm defining three integers right here, and this is a new one. I've shown this before in the tutorial. You can actually define three variables at the same time as an integer, uh, which is really cool. It saves a lot of space. Um, I'm going to have to define a color and a label. And then I'm going to do the same typical nested for loops that we use for that we use for two-dimensional arrays, and then we're going to go ahead and set some values. So the first three lines here are randomly getting numbers between 0 and 255 representing the RGB color and then we define that color as color from arguments RGB given the red, green, and blue numbers that we have. So that defines a color within the program. Then I define a new label. I set the name of the label. I set the top based on another mathematical calculation, the left of the mathematical equation. And this equation is based on, again, the margins, the width, the padding, and everything, such that the grid layout looks nicely on the screen. Setting the width and height. And then what we do is we set some properties for the labels. And what this does here is it 
says give me the label we're going to say are we going to click on this label and we're going to set the color of the label so if we had clicked on the label then we're going to set the font to bold otherwise we're going to leave it regular and i think we change the font size here too we're going to set the back color being the color that was put in and then we're going to say if the average of the colors the rgbs is less than 122.5 which is halfway uh, we're going to make the four color being white meaning that we're dark enough that white text would be more appropriate we're going to define an array of strings and we're going to use that to split the name and based on that name we can get the row and the column, column from it and then we can set the text to be a color translator to HTML color. So that's pretty cool. The last thing we're going to do is a new concept here. So you can create a subroutine that's going to perform or do some stuff and you can attach that subroutine to a control using the add handler because when you don't have a control on the screen you can't double click on it and create a click event so what you do is you can add a handler that was defined in the code so my L variable here was defined in the code so I'm adding a handler to that L click and what it is is the address of me dot label label click and me label click is a simply a subroutine I have here and notice there's no handles on it so it is a custom subroutine and so anytime that this label L gets clicked on, it's going to run this subroutine. And then what I do is I, I make the equivalent element in the two-dimensional array equal to that label. And that's all this does is initialize it. There's a lot of things that happen in there, so pause the video, take your time, have a look at it, and see if you can figure out what it does. But the idea here is that all we're doing is we're setting up the original labels using some randomization and we're adding handlers. This add handler thing is really, really uh, convenient. So once we've initialized the array, then we're actually going to display the colors on the screen. So if we go to the definition of display colors, again, nested for loops, and all it's going to do is me.controls.add. So it's going to add the label to the form, and you can see that we're using the two-dimensional array in here to add it to the label. Yeah, add it to the form. In fact, we could, and let me try this, I didn't think if we should do this, it would be an easier way to do it. We should be able to go for each element, or each lab as label in labels me.controls dot add lab. I think we can actually do that. So we don't actually need the nested loops because all we're doing in there is adding the, the label. And it doesn't matter in which order it comes in. So let's run this and see if it works. And yes it did. So that looks good. So we can go ahead and let's change this to a 3x3 three three and run it. And there we go. The other thing is, remember that add handler we added? Well, I can click on any one of these labels. So let's click there. It's going to bring up a color dialog. So that's sort of a awful thing. I'll change that to a pretty green color and you can see that it changed it and actually changed it to the HTML color code. Now the HTML color code for green is green. You can find the hexadecimal code but you don't always have to use hexadecimal in uh, HTML. Sometimes it'll be HTML uh, hexadecimal and sometimes it'll be the color code. I believe if I click this one it'd be silver. So that way you can see that it, it's working fairly nicely and I also can set the row height let's say that set the row height to 50 and the column width will set this to 150 and reset and you can see that the column width didn't work and I'll have to figure out why oh because 100 is the biggest so it's set to 75 if you run that again there we go so I've got it set up so that everything works out nicely the spacing of these is identical and consistent and everything gets placed in the appropriate placing just using a couple of mathematical calculations so the biggest thing here is that we're using a two-dimensional array of labels we're setting the properties of the labels up here using an instanti instantiated version of label and then associating labels to uh, an equivalency of that label if we go back to the previous 
code in the previous tutorial, we can see that we set the labels i equals we set the array of labels to the label before we did the properties, where in this one we're actually doing it at the end. It honestly doesn't matter because unless you use the new uh, constructor when you're creating the elements in the first place, they are actually in fact the same element. So I can probably, if I go here, I can set this uh, to labels uh, so you can go back and forth and change them because they are in fact actually the same one. If I was to instant set this equals up here above, it would not make any difference in the way that the program actually reacts. So there's a really good code example that gives you a bunch of new things like add handler. Um, it has the color dialog. So when I click on it, it opens up the show dialog for the color dialog and then it resets the labels again. So given those colors and then displays them. And so it gives you a few nice new things in here along with the ability to use an array to display. So again, we'll show you there's no colors, there's nothing on there, there's not even any labels. So, but when I run it, up comes a four by four grid of our things. And I can change this right up and say six by six, reset it. Now it's gonna scroll off my screen, but you can see here that we have a nice array of of colors in there. Thank you so much.